Hey everybody, Will from Studio Zombie 3D here. Today, we're taking a look at the longer LK5 Pro 3D printer. We're going to get it set up and test it out. Let's get right into it. Alright, we have everything out on the table here. Here's the base with your electronics in the build plate. Here's your upright gantry, and then your X axis with your extruder all pre-assembled. This is the upgraded dual blower version of the LK5 Pro. Alright, we're going to put this down out of the way and continue to take a look at what we have in the box. Here, we have our 4.3 inch full color touchscreen. Be sure to be careful to peel off the sticker if it's on your screen. Alright, next we have our upright supports and our Z-axis rod. Alright, next we have the filament spool holder. This mounts on the back of the printer. Then we have our standard power cable. Next we have the Z-axis motor. This is a Z-axis guide for the top of the gantry. We have the film extra filament runout sensor. These are the various screws that we have to attach everything and put it together. Some extra zip ties so you can secure everything in place. And then your standard scraper and wrench. You also have a standard set of Allen keys so you can put the printer together. Then we have our filament guide and an extra filament runout sensor that's provided. Next. We have the brass fitting that goes on the X gantry to help guide the Z axis rod. And then our user manual on how to put it together and get everything running. Alright, let's get to putting this printer together. First thing we're going to do is install the brass fitting for the Z rod to go through the X gantry. Using the two screws provided, just fasten it from underneath, but not to tighten too much. You'll want to leave a little bit of play in it until you get the Z-axis rod in and everything set up. Next thing we're going to do is install the Z-axis motor on the bottom of the gantry. Using the provided screws, just fasten it to the bottom here. Make sure it's good and tight and straight. And the final step for our upright gantry, we're going to thread the Z-Rod down through the brass fitting into the coupler on the Z-axis motor. Once you have the rod fully seated, be sure to tighten the coupler and make sure it doesn't slip. Now that we're finished with the upright assembly, we can now attach it to the base of the printer. Using the four provided screws, line up the top and attach it to the bottom. Be sure to line it up and make sure everything's straight before tightening everything down. Repeat the process on the opposite side of the printer, making sure everything's straight, lined up, and tight. Also, while we have the printer on its side, be sure to peel off the sticker and set the voltage on the power transformer to your proper voltage for your country. I'm in Canada, so I had to set it to 110. Be sure it clicks over and locks into place securely. Once we have finished securing the upright to the base, we're going to go and attach the two supporting rods. Using the four screws provided, attach them to the places here. 
you might have to adjust the rods themselves so that they reach and that are secure. And then repeat the process on the bottom as well. Now we can install the Z-axis stabilizer bearing. Using the screws provided, just attach it up top and make sure the Z-rod goes through the bearing securely. Now we can install the spool holder in the back of the printer. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the Z axis end stop. This goes just above the sticker that was on the frame before you put the axe gantry on. Once you have everything together, you might find you need to adjust it a little bit, so just be aware of that. Now, we're nearing completion. Now we just gotta install the screen and attach all the wires. And now finally, we're just going to make sure everything's plugged into the correct locations. All of the plugs are marked. Be sure to plug in the x-axis end stop, the x-axis motor, the extruder, and then finally the filament runout sensor. And finally, we're going to put the filament guide in. This just slides onto the gantry here. Simple as that. All that's left to do now is peel protective coating off the bed and install the clips and then power it up. And here we are with the screen and the printer powered on. I really like the 4.3 inch full color touchscreen on the longer. They have a really nice menu system. We're going to take a closer look at that right now. The first button we have on the screen is the move section. This is where we control all of our axes and been able to turn the motors off and on. Next up, we have our print section, which is our file tab. This is where your SD files are stored. Here we have our filament controls for loading, unloading, and preheating. This is the about panel with the information about the firmware. Here we have our tuning section with all our controls. And finally we have our leveling tab. This is a manual leveling printer, but they give you some options to help you guide you through the process. Alright, it's time to run our first bed level. You're going to go into the leveling menu and then you're going to click on the number 1. You're going to go through each of the five points using a piece of paper and adjusting the knobs on the bottom of the bed to adjust the distance between the bed and the nozzle. Once you have got one point just right where it grabs the paper but not too tight, move to the next number. You might have to go around the bed a couple times just to make sure everything's level.
As an option, Longer has an excellent guide for adding the BL Touch to the LK5 Pro. They have a section on their site with easy to follow steps, with the firmware you need, start G code so you can do your leveling, and how to set up your Z offset with the BL Touch. I highly recommend checking it out and grabbing a BL Touch. It just makes life a lot easier for some of these printers. And here we have my newly installed BL Touch running on its first level. Once you have the BL Touch installed and have flashed the firmware, once you level the bed, it'll run through a 5x5 grid, checking 25 points on the bed to get a level mesh. It takes a little bit of time, about 5 minutes, but it really helps out. It also saves the hassle of the manually leveling your bed, which I find is a need to have. And here we have a completed print once I put the BL Touch on. This is the Imperial Dragon off Flexi Factory. I absolutely love this model and the color change filament worked perfectly with this printer. I love the colors on this print. So what are my thoughts on the longer LK5 Pro? In my time I had when I was reviewing and testing it, Everything I tried to print, printed really well. With very little tuning and calibration out of the box, everything I threw at it printed. I tried TPU, PETG, but mostly PLA. Various types of silks, color changes, all were no problem with the LK5 Pro. TPU, if it's a softer like the Ninja Flex, you might have a bit of problem with the Bowden setup. But stiffer TPUs are no issue. PETG also posed no problem with the LK5 Pro. The glass bed with the ceramic coating really holds on to prints while it's heated up, and once cool, they pop off with very little effort. My favorite print on this printer so far though is this Dragon. This thing came out amazing. No problems with any of the joints, and the layers are great. This color change stuff is absolutely amazing too. The build volume of the longer LK5 Pro was also pretty good, 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. You could do some pretty decent sized prints on the machine, so it's in the mid range area for size. It also comes equipped with TMC 2208 on the X, Y, and Z axis, and it really is a quiet printer. The only thing you really hear are the fans. And if you're not in a room with it, I don't think you'll really notice it. Another really nice thing that I liked about the Long LK5 Pro is on the touchscreen while you're printing, there's an option to change filament. So at any time during the print, you just press filament, it asks you if you want to change. You hit yes, it unloads the filament, asks you to load the new filament, you load it, it purges, and continues to print. And it does it really well. Look at these dragons. The dual colors actually merged really well. I'm quite impressed with the longer LK5, and I think you would be too. It's definitely a printer that would be worthwhile having in the arsenal of 3D printing. Another nice touch that Longer has is they gave you an extra filament runout sensor, and it also comes equipped with a high temperature PTFE Teflon tube that's rated up to 280 degrees. Another nice little bonus. 
The manual leveling is a bit of a pain, but they have an awesome option with the BL Touch, and I highly recommend it. And here we have a little bit of footage of it printing. The only thing you hear are the fans, really. Alright everybody, that was my look at the Long Grail K5 Pro. I highly recommend checking this printer out if you're looking for a mid-sized printer. Everything I printed on this came out awesome and I've been using it daily since I got it. It's really turned out to be quite the workhouse printer for my studio. Alright everybody, that's the video. Thanks for watching and check out the Studio Zombie 3D Instagram for more of what's going on in the studio. We'll see you all in the next video. Take care everybody.